Hi everyone. This week I'm coming at you with a, another episode of a personal story. After I uploaded my last video about my deli belly story, I got a bit of feedback and I had a few people that thought it would be funny and interesting to share a few more stories of times where I maybe did not do the brightest of things. <laughs> something bad happened and there's a lesson learned. So I think this will be a good follow-up from all the talk about diseases as well, just to give some very concrete examples of what not to do so you don't have to make those mistakes like I did. Today I'm going to be sharing the story about that lentil soup that nearly killed me. It wasn't actually the lentil soup that was the main culprit of this. If I'm being really honest, it could have been a combination of foods. This is when I traveled to Nepal after India. So this is post Delhi belly stomach bug. Now, if you watched my last video, you'll know that I did mention that I had a lot of issues after the fact. Not as severe where I needed to go to the doctor and get drugs again, but I still needed to rest for a few days and suffer for a little bit on numerous occasions while I was in Nepal for those two months after the stomach bug incident. So this has to do with one of those aftermath deli belly things. And this was after I was trekking and I came back to Pokhara, which is the gateway city that people stay in before they do the Annapurna circuit trek. We had just finished trekking, so we wanted just to eat lots of food and hang out. And I had a falafel and a mango lasting about an hour roughly an hour possibly less than that I had to vomit with such force I don't remember the last time I felt like I needed to puke that badly so got really sick puked a bunch overnight that puking turned into this diarrhea session so not fun the next day that sort of stopped because I had taken a modium I know this is probably more a Canadian brand but basically it's an anti-diarrhea pill so I took that but then I just started feeling really feverish like my whole body was kind of aching I was really tired that persisted for I think two days and I wasn't really eating much either. My friends were eating pizza and Chinese food and I was sitting there just feeling ill. One day, I think it was the third day, if I grab my calendar I'll be able to tell you. Yes, third day after I had that suspicious falafel. Now this is where we are. Three days later, I decided, okay, I was at this restaurant with my friends and there was a soup on the menu, lentil soup. I'm thinking, mm, that sounds like kind of hearty and nice, right? Got the lentil soup. Well, after I had that lentil soup, the floodgates opened. Like, I can't even tell you. There was so much liquid coming out of my mouth and my rear that I just didn't know what to do. That night was so awful. It's funny because the deli belly incident was really bad, but that was because my fever and aches were so bad, I couldn't handle it. But this, this was very different kind of bad, maybe equally as bad. So anyways, I have that incident and I realized after the fact, okay, I'm gonna change my game here. No more Imodium pills. Well, my friend had some rehydration salts with him, so he gave me some of those. And I basically just had to eat plain rice and plain bread for the next few days, which was not fun. I did mix it up a little bit. There was one morning at breakfast, I had a, let me just go to my calendar here, my little journal. I had boiled potato <laughs> and rice at breakfast. And I also note, oh, toast all day. I'm hungry AF. At the end of that day is what I wrote in my journal, which is funny, but also kind of sad. Now it's funny, but in the moment I was not happy. You know, after a few days, like I said, of changing up what I was eating there and I had lots of the rehydration salts and was having lots of water and it, it did subside. So in the end, all was well. However, what can we learn from this? Number one thing that you don't want to do, don't take a modium unless you really need to. So say you are in a situation where you don't have access to a toilet or a bathroom and <laughs> releasing all those fluids all at once is going to be problematic. I understand in those cases, take the Imodium. But where I think I went wrong was taking it when I didn't really need to. I could have just hunkered down and stayed in, but I took the Imodium. And what I think that did was sort of keep in whatever what was making me really sick inside. That's why I think I was feeling the feverish symptoms and the aches and the tiredness. So my suggestion is don't take something like Imodium unless you really need to. Rather, let the demons out. Let them out. 
I mean, obviously it's a painful process, but probably better in the end to treat your symptoms in a different way, which is where I'm going to get to next. Do eat starchy foods. Like I said, I was eating plain rice, plain toast, boiled potato, <laughs> it's pretty neutral. I just needed some variety. I was sick of the rice, but largely the, the rice and the bread is a really good way to go. Now, what that will do, like I said, you don't want to take the Imodium, but having the high starchy foods, it would be a better way to sort of slow down that faucet that is leaking and give yourself a little bit of a rest. Other side of that is try to avoid really fibrous foods. That's what you don't want. So that lentil soup, lentils are full of fiber, guys. That was not a wise choice. Don't do that, <laughs> okay? Don't do that. So starchy foods, don't take Imodium. Number three that I will get to is rehydration salts. Now I actually, this one is literally from this incident. So this from Nepal, it's old. I, I mean, it, it could be expired. I don't know if they expire, but it's just from an old bag of mine and I found it. So I thought I would show you guys. The rehydration salts are also really key along with the starchy foods because when you're vomiting and having diarrhea often, that's gonna dehydrate you really fast and it's gonna deplete you of energy. Now you still wanna drink lots of water. That is also important, but with the vomiting and the diarrhea, your, your blood sugar, your electrolytes is all decreasing and that's gonna rid you of all your energy. So try and have those to replenish that equilibrium in your body. You can buy packs like this, maybe not ones that maybe look exactly like mine, but you can get those at most pharmacies. They're pretty widely available. If you don't want to buy them, you can also make your own. You would have to search up a recipe with a certain amount of sugar and salt to add into water. You could also do that. I like to have those because it's quick and easy. And if I'm really, really low energy, I don't have to walk out to a pharmacy or go out and get what I need. It's just there. And I also like those because because a lot of these rehydration salt packs have a little bit of flavor. I think that one is orange. Why is that kind of nice? Because if you've been vomiting and you're really nauseous, the last thing you want is this salt, sugar, weird taste in your mouth. It's not pleasant. So that's one reason to maybe get the salt packs rather than make your own, but up to you. Now, the last thing I would suggest and this was something I actually did from a suggestion from my friend who also gave me the rehydration salts. Probiotics. Probiotics are going to help you bring your body back to that healthy bacteria in your gut, which is going to help prevent you from having one of these attacks again. Like I said in the last video about my deli belly, the doctor did prescribe me probiotics, but clearly that was not enough for me. So if you can get probiotics, you can probably pick them up at a local pharmacy. Even where I was in Nepal, they had quite a few at the pharmacies around. So there were some options for me there so it probably won't be too hard to find and that's going to help you bring you back to hopefully a better normal that's not leaking from every orifice that is that that's it for this episode i hope you found this interesting and funny because my suffering is a little bit funny i'm, I'm not gonna lie if you like this episode let me know i'm gonna be doing a few more like this as opposed to more of the tips for a little bit i just want to change it up and bring a little bit more comedy in i guess <laughs> let me know if you've had an instance like like this. I know there's probably tons of travelers out there that have. It can be awkward, it can be painful, but most of us get through it and we laugh about it in the end. So let me know. Send me a comment down below. I'd be happy to chat with you. With all that in mind, subscribe for more stories like this because I'm coming up with more soon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next week. See you next time.